In this video, we are going to examine the concept of vorticity, a property of fluids that is closely related to its spin that provides a convenient means for predicting the time evolution of flows. We start with the geostrophic equations, developed from the rotating momentum equations with the assumptions that the flow is steady, wide and thin, rapidly rotating and inviscid. In the horizontal directions, there is a balance between the Coriolis forces and the horizontal pressure gradients, and in the vertical, the fluid is hydrostatic. These equations describe a balanced state that is time independent. They are not able to describe the time evolving flow, which is an important pursuit for forecasting significant weather events like Cyclone Winston. To achieve this, we need a new set of equations. We can begin with the geostrophic equations in x and y, and subtract these from the total time derivatives of the flow in the x and y directions. We can expand these out to get equations with the complete set of advection terms. The first terms we can get rid of are these two, vertical velocity times the vertical shear, which is the vertical gradient of the horizontal velocity. We can do this because we are assuming the vertical velocities are small or that the Taylor-Proudman theorem is in effect, in which case both the vertical velocity and the vertical shear are zero. Either way, we are only interested in the horizontal velocities within this thin, wide flow. We cross-differentiate the two equations, that is, differentiate equation 1 in y and equation 2 in x. This returns a common pressure gradient term, that is, the second derivative of pressure in x and y. We can then combine these two equations using this common term. The product rule is used to expand this expression, which is then rearranged and reduced to give an equation with the total time derivative of the Coriolis parameter plus the x derivative of the v velocity minus the y derivative of the u velocity plus the horizontal divergence times the same group of terms as we have with the total time derivative. At this point we define zeta is equal to dv dx minus du dy and make the substitution for zeta back into the previous equation returning the total time derivative of f plus zeta plus the horizontal divergence times f plus zeta is equal to zero. This is called the vorticity equation. The term zeta needs some introduction. It is referred to as the relative vorticity and can be expressed as the curl of the horizontal velocities. Picture a column of fluid. Here we are looking at it from above. Imagine it is in a region of horizontal shear so that there is a y direction gradient to the u velocity. Here the negative of this gradient is oriented in the positive y direction and that there is also shear in the v velocity so that there is an x direction gradient to the v velocity which is pointing in the negative x direction. The relative vorticity is the combination of these two shears, so that a parcel of water in a sheared flow has the relative vorticity zeta, which is a function of this shear. This can also be thought of as the spin of the water column. Now we return to the vorticity equation. This can be dissected to reveal some interesting features. F, which we have been calling the Coriolis parameter, in the vorticity framework is referred to as the planetary vorticity. It is exactly how it is under the name the Coriolis parameter. It is simply a function of latitude and Earth's rotation rate. Zeta, which we have just seen, is the relative vorticity, which physically reflects the spin of the water column. The sum of these two give the absolute vorticity. Now a change in absolute vorticity is only permissible if there is a finite horizontal divergence, which, when considering the flow as a set of infinitely narrow spinning columns, 
relates to the vertical stretching and squashing of spinning fluid parcels. We can take this concept one step further. Given that we are considering the fluid as vertical spinning columns, the continuity equation of each column can be written as per usual, and we can integrate this over the depth of the fluid H to return the total time derivative of the fluid column depth H plus the horizontal divergence times the depth H is equal to zero. This is saying that to change H, to change the depth of the column, you need a finite horizontal divergence, which is fairly intuitive to understand. Now, this equation has the same form as the vorticity equation, and we can use the horizontal divergence term to combine the two equations to get this expression. The total time derivative of f plus zeta on h is equal to zero. This term, f plus zeta on h, is defined as q and is called the potential vorticity. The potential vorticity is a property of the flow that is conserved along stream paths. For a fluid to change f, its latitude, zeta, its spin, or h, its height, there must be a compensating change in one or both of the other terms. This principle provides a convenient means for predicting the time evolution of the flow. To finish off with, consider what will happen to a parcel of water as it flows northward to larger f in a basin of uniform depth, h.